Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Black Ops 2 In Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing the foregrip yet again. This is starting to sound like it's the foregrip channel. However, today I've discovered exactly what the foregrip does. Yes, today's episode is the foregrip, what it actually does. I was incorrect in the previous episodes in saying that it does nothing. However, I was very, very close to what it was doing. So I was both wrong and right at the same time. It's a very complicated matter. We have a lot of things to discuss today, and I'm sure you all want to know about this. I'm going to give you an itinerary of what's going on. The first thing I'm going to discuss is why I was doing wall tests. Then I'm going to discuss the giant list of things that the foregrip does not do because there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding about the things that it actually changes. Then I'm going to go back to Modern Warfare 3 to show how it worked in previous games and that ties into the wall testing. Then we're going to move into 120 FPS PC footage that shows some of the effect of the foregrip. Then I'm going to do a very brief rundown and discussion of how Call of Duty games handle the recoil mechanic and how the foregrip relates to that. Then finally, near the end of the episode, I'm going to be discussing the exact uh, numerical effects of the foregrip, how this is going to change your accuracy, along with some other attachments that I found change your accuracy. Very interesting episode, a lot going on. Please stick around. Please don't skip anything. And without wasting any more of your time, let's get started with why I do wall tests. The number one reason I was doing wall tests is because they negate human error. I was simply shooting at the wall, I wasn't moving my thumbstick at all, just holding down the trigger, not even usually the rest of the hand touching the controller. And the reason I do this is because it gives me a very good accuracy plot of the weapon, and there is zero human error involved. A lot of the other recommended testing methods involve moving the stick or moving while shooting or various things that could include human error, which are not, uh, that it's not good. Now let's talk about the giant list of things that the foregrip does not affect. I know this either from my understanding of the game code or from the extremely extensive testing I've done on it. The foregrip does not affect burst fire accuracy. There were a lot of people saying that if you shoot just in burst then you can see the effect or that it doesn't work with fully automatic mode that's not true it does not affect burst fire only it doesn't affect the effectiveness of the game's auto aim the effectiveness of the aim assist which are actually two different things it doesn't affect the accuracy while crouched or prone accuracy while moving it doesn't affect the flinch that's the toughness perk it doesn't affect the distance at which the red name pops up the range of the auto aim that's a little different than the magnitude it also does not affect the randomness of the recoil as you've seen in the previous episodes the recoil could be quite random, doesn't affect that. It does not affect the first shot pattern of the recoil because some people were saying the foregrip will let you get like five shots with no recoil. Not true. It also does not affect the recoil after quickly aiming down sights. It does not affect the recoil only when aiming at a person. That's not a mechanic that's involved in this. And it doesn't affect the recoil while falling. A lot of things it doesn't do and uh, we're going to move into the thing it does do, but first I want to go back in time to Modern Warfare 3 and show you why I was doing wall test. We're here on, uh, I, f I even forget the name of this map, construction, whatever. This is the regular MK46, no grip, no nothing, no kick attachment, just raw. Firing off the first two little strips of uh, ammunition there. I don't know what the exact number is. This one has a grip. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the wall. You can see all the bullets. And as you can see, there is an improvement in the recoil pattern. It's a tighter spread. This is what I was expecting to find when I started it in Black Ops 2. I'm going to do it a couple more times just to prove that it wasn't random, it wasn't a fluke, and that I'm not crazy. Burn off a couple more rounds here, and we're going to burn off a couple more on the left. And what you're going to see is that this one was not as big of an improvement, but the one on the left was still more accurate. I can do this again and again and again in a variety of different ways. I'm going to change the wall and the scenario. This is me just kind of randomly looking around for a wall. Okay, so I've got about one of those strips of ammo left. I believe I'm back to the regular MK48 now. I'm going to plow into the wall. I get a pattern like that. Swap over to the MK40. I keep saying MK48 because it's a Black Ops weapon. MK46. And you can clearly see the pattern on the right is tighter than the pattern on the left. Nothing complicated about that. So now we have moved over to one. I, I stacked this one uh, raw, nothing on this one, and then the next one is going to have grip and kick. The grip and kick actually do the exact same thing. They both affect center speed, so it would be like having two grips on your gun, and as silly as that is, you can see that there is a very, very clear improvement in the recoil, and this is what I was trying to test in Black Ops 2, but as you all know, that didn't really pan out. A very friendly subscriber sent over this footage from the PC version of Black Ops 2. He's running fraps. You can't see the FPS corner uh, counter in the top right. 
but this is 120 FPS PC footage with the grip on the right, regular, regular on the left, testing some basic guns. And what you'll notice if you watch closely, I've kind of got it cropped funny, the one on the right doesn't shake quite as much. The one on the left shakes a little bit, it does some funny things on occasion. Uh, the one on the right is ever so slightly more stable. I had to look at this a couple of times to make sure that I wasn't crazy, that I wasn't imagining things, and I would say that the one on the right is slightly more stable, and based from that, I would say that the grip does something. However, while I was editing this episode, uh, Marvel 4, who, who does a lot of nice stuff over at the Den Kirsten forums, and he's kind of the wizard of, of this, he managed to decrypt part of the game files, the recoil part of the game files, and uh, hand deliver to me the exact statistics on the grip. However, in order to be able to understand this, we first need a very brief crash course in how Call of Duty handles recoil. In the description, you will find a link to a video that Xbox Ahoy did, where he broke down how the recoil mechanic works in Call of Duty. And I think that's an excellent video. You'll get a lot of understanding for that. I think that I might also put a link there to a thread in the Den forums about recoil so that my brief overview may not uh, satisfy everybody. There are three basic re recoil mechanics in Call of Duty. You have shake, view kick, and gun kick. Matter of fact, I don't know of any more, just those. The shake is the screen wobble. That's how violently your gun shakes and wobbles around and how much mess it is and how much impact it has when you shoot the bullet. It doesn't actually affect your recoil at all. It's more like a skin or an animation. The second one, view kick, is the most important. This one you can best visualize by when you're playing Call of Duty and you aim down sights, your, your view kicks with the gun. When you have recoil, it kicks up and your sights move up and your vision moves up. It's kind of like your camera or your player HUD were just duct taped to the end of the barrel of the gun so that your perspective is the barrel of the gun. That's view kick. This is by far the most important mechanism in recoil. Lastly, there is a mechanic called gun kick, which I found to be a little bit more complicated. It is not as powerful as view kick on your overall recoil, but it doesn't matter. And this kind of simulation simulates the nuances of holding a gun in real life, whereas the camera strap to the end wouldn't. This would be the twisting left, right, up, down. A little bit of that. Not as important as view kick. There are a lot of variables that go into view kick. One of the most important ones is what we call return to center speed or center speed. Uh, Vonderhaar actually tweeted about this, and I'm going to try to read these tweets in order. I took a screenshot, and you kind of read them backwards. This is Vonderhaar says, using the grip makes a big difference. Uh, talks about some YouTube stuff. It says, grip typically modifies the ADS center speed scale for view kick, which is exactly what we're talking about here. Many don't understand the impact of view kick versus gun kick. Accuracy isn't as simple as a single measurement, and empirically it's difficult to understand. Very true. Uh, he goes on to discuss many things. Uh, I think there's some other tweets where we talk to each other. A lot of people think that I am against Vonderhaar, that Vonderhaar slams me. That's not really true. I just talk to him very briefly. If he's upset with me or if I'm upset with him, then there's been some sort of weird understanding. So return to center speed is what the grip uh, will affect, and faster center speed effectively means less recoil. In past Call of Duty games, the grip would increase center speed by about 7% all the way up to 20%. In Black Ops 1, it was typically closer to 7%. They would just add plus 100. Uh, center speed numbers usually on 1,000, 14, uh, 1,400, 1,500, 1,600, 1,200, something like that, and I'm pretty sure grip was across the board plus 100 so depending on the gun it you know be around seven percent modern warfare games they typically added a lot more to uh two three hundred four hundred on occasion so they could go up to 200 percent especially when you stacked with the kick proficiency they can make a very big difference there typically anything under 10 percent is difficult to see on a wall test even in black ops one it's difficult to see the effects of the grip on a wall test you can you can if you get lucky or if you do it a lot uh, over 10%, very easy to test. We saw it in Modern Warfare 3, no problem at all. It's a very strong effect. So after all of that exposition, finally, what does the grip do? The grip increases center speed by 2%. 2% increase the center speed, whereas in Black Ops 1, the grip would add plus 100. This one just has a multiplier of 2%, and it would be something like uh, plus 30 plus 24, plus 35 instead of plus 100. It's basically about one-third less strong as it was in uh, Black Ops 1 and an order of magnitude uh, 10 times weaker than it would be in a modern warfare game. On some machine guns, it's only 1.5% increase in the center speed, even lower. 
Other attachments get some interesting effects. A suppressor is a negative 2% to your center speed, uh, so it actually increases your recoil. The EOTech sight is going to decrease your recoil by 1%. ACOG as plus two percent and so the ACOG is going to make you just as accurate as a grip the ACOG and the grip are equally accurate with each other so in my mind I'm like well if I have the option I'll just run an ACOG site and I'll get the benefit of two attachments except they do stack with each other they're multiplicative so if you do ACOG and grip it's 4.04 percent center center speed I tested this in Black Ops 2 what I try to do is do one gun with a suppressor and another gun with uh, the ACOG and the grip even with about a 6% delta there, it showed pretty much nothing on a wall test, and I really, really could not get any Black Ops 2 footage to really show this other than the 120 FPS PC footage, which was really nice, and I'm really grateful for the subscriber that sent that in. So at the end of the day, the grip does do something. It very, very, very slightly tweaks your recoil, and I cannot em emphasize how, how small of an effect I, I feel that this is. Um, I do not believe that it is worth an attachment point. Almost nobody is going to be able to notice this. I actually I got I got into it with optic nade shot a little while back, arguing with it. I was being I was being a butt. I was just sensitive. That's how it was, and he said that he could definitely feel it. Maybe the top 0.01% of pro players that have godlike reaction times maybe can sense this a little bit. The vast majority of human beings this is going to be on be it be beyond their ability to sense. I would like to see it buffed up to about 8%. I feel like at 8% or closer to 10%, maybe I could test for it then. That would be great for making a YouTube video, but I feel like it might be more useful. People might feel it better. You might be able to do something with it at closer to 8% or 10%. That's what I would like. I would really like to see a grip buff. However, I know that I'm not a game developer. I am not the programming team at Treyarch. I am not the multiplayer division at Activision. I, I, I know that this was made weak for a reason. I personally do not understand the reason. It may be because it was considered overpowered before. As they mentioned in the live stream, if you tweak anything to accuracy, you might as well just tweak a lot of other things because accuracy in a, lot of, in a lot of guns is more important than damage or anything else. And if you increase the accuracy too much, you can make something overpowered. I would not want to see this become a crazily overpowered attachment. But as it is, I just feel that it's too weak to be useful. Oh yes, one more thing. I would like to give credit to Marvel4 who decrypted all of this and kind of hand delivered the stats. I asked him what he would like uh, in exchange for his information, a shout out, some kind of credit. He told me that him and Mousy, who's another member of the forums, they want me to draw a picture of a rabbit holding my favorite guns ever. And thus I present to you uh, Rabbit plus Scorpions, my beautiful artwork. I, I drew a very obese rabbit with weird feet holding... I guess those are scorpions. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it. Well, guys, that's all for this very long episode of In-Depth. I hope that you learned something useful. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you'd like to check out the previous episode on the MK48, you can click the box on the left. If you'd like to check out the next episode on the QBB LSW, click the box on the right. As always, if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.